today's at-home worship on behalf of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, also known as the Old Town Church in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. My name is Pastor Kelly and I'll be leading at-home worship today as a reminder to all of us that we need to stay home and stay safe, not only for ourselves, but also for our community. I'll be taping worship from home today. For the past two weeks, just as many of you have been reaching out and checking in on each other, offering assistance to your neighbors and one another, our churches have been doing the same thing, sharing resources and ideas as to how we can best serve our communities in our ever-changing society. So as we begin, I first would like to ask you to join me in taking a deep breath as we become fully present in this time and in the spaces that we're in. And then I'd like to share with you a welcome that's adapted from one shared by the Reverend Angela Wells Bean, pastor of the United Church of Christ in Burlington, Massachusetts. Beloved ones, church family, we are glad that you've joined us for worship this morning. Whether you're in your living room or your bedroom, or somewhere else, you are welcome here. Whether you're wearing your pajamas, or street clothes, or something else, you are welcome here. Whether you're drinking tea, or coffee, or something else, you are welcome here. Whether this is your first time attending online worship, or you've done it before, you are welcome here. Whether you're alone in your home or with family, you are welcome here. Whether you're feeling calm or anxious or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. Whether you've wor worshipped with us many times before or this is your very first time, you are welcome here. For as we always say in Old Town, no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. And we are so glad that you've come to join us this morning in worship. Friends, as we come to our call to worship, I'm going to ask that you respond from home. And your response is going to be, we are the body of Christ. Again, your response is, we are the body of Christ, and I'll raise my hand when it comes to your turn. In this uncertain time when we are filled with frustration and worry, let us remember we are the body of Christ. As we're forced to suspend in-person worship and worship from home, let us remember we are the body of Christ. As we center ourselves and prepare for worship, let us remember that the church is not a building, for we are the church, and we are the body of Christ. So let us be the hands and feet of Jesus as we worship together, for we are the body of Christ. Friends, will you join me in a moment of prayer? Loving God, be with us in this time together, wherever we are. Help us to remember that worship can happen anywhere because you are not confined to a building. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to worship in new and different ways as we experience your presence today and every day. For we truly are the body of Christ whether we are gathered or scattered. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, in the Old Testament, we hear a story of Elijah, one of God's prophets. Now, a prophet was someone who heard God's voice and shared God's message with others. Now, it wasn't always easy to be a prophet, and though it was a special gift, to hear God's voice, it was also a great responsibility. And many times, people were not happy to hear the message that prophets brought. Now, during Elijah's life, Queen Jezebel 
encouraged the Israelite people to start following a false god. And when they did, things started to go very badly for the Israelites. There was a great drought, which meant there wasn't enough rain for crops to grow, and without crops, it was hard to find enough food for everyone. It was a very scary time. But Elijah challenged the people who believed in these false gods to a contest to prove whose god was the true god. Elijah asked his God to send down fire on an altar to, as a sign of God's power, and God did. When the false God's prophets called on their God, nothing happened. So everyone saw that Elijah's God was the true God. Now do you think that made Jezebel happy? No, not at all. Jezebel was so angry at Elijah that he had to run away into the wilderness to escape Jezebel and her people. Elijah had won the contest, but in so doing, he had to run for his life. And that's where our scripture reading begins today. Our scripture reading comes from the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 19, and we'll be reading verses 4 through 8. I invite you to hear these words. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and he laid down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time and said to him, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and he went on the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. My friends, here ends today's reading. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these holy, holy words. Okay, my friends, let's take another deep breath. Let's take a moment to center ourselves and to quiet our souls as together we listen for the voice of our still speaking God. Gracious and loving God, come to us in this place in the calming of our minds and the longing of our hearts. In the stillness of this moment, speak, O Lord, for your children are listening. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, we began the season of Lent just a few weeks ago, with the scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, as written in Eugene Peterson's The Message. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Each week since the season of Lent began, we have been asking, how is your soul? 
as we learn more about what it means to truly live freely and lightly. Now, when the season of Lent began, we had no idea that we would be in the situation that we're in right now. We didn't know that fear and frustration and anxiety that many of us would experience with our regular schedules being turned upside down and our everyday ways of life being changed. But though we didn't plan for this, somehow the Holy Spirit is guiding us through. Now for the past three weeks, we have also been trying different spiritual practices for a week at a time through our daily email Lenten devotionals. And if you'd like to be added to our email list, please email me at Pastor Kelly at Old Town UCC. That's P-A-S-T-O-R-K-E-L-L-Y at Old Town, O-L-D-T-O-W-N, U-C-C dot org. So far we've learned the practice of examine, the practice of worship, and the practice of fasting. All practices that help us spend a little more time with God each day as we pay attention and hopefully notice more clearly God's presence in our lives. Now, though we've been talking about how we can live more freely and lightly, even in the midst of depression and stress and busyness, I'm sure that if I asked most of you right now, how is your soul free and light, might not be the answer that you give me. And that's okay. Because, friends, we are all a work in progress and a creation that's constantly in the process of being created. Friends, as human beings, we all experience mountaintop experiences and times in the deepest valleys. But no matter where you find yourself today, and I have a feeling I probably know what your answer is, there's always light to be found and a glimmer of hope calling your name. As many of you know, I am a strong believer that there is a silver lining in every cloud, that in every challenge there's a lesson to be learned, and that even in the darkest moments there's a flickering light that shines on our path. I have to tell you, I often turn to today's scripture reading when I'm having a tough day, because after hearing Elijah's story, my day usually looks a lot brighter. Scripture says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Friends, Elijah was exhausted. He had had a really tough day, but Elijah was a good prophet, and God was happy with the work that he had done, so God sent an angel to encourage Elijah. As scripture says, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones in a jar of water. He ate and drank and laid down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and he ate and he drank and he went on the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to the mount of Horeb, the mount of God. Friends, many of us are exhausted. Many of us are frustrated and stressed because of all that's going on in the world around us. We're worried about work and finances. We're worried about school and child care. We're worried about plans that we had and an illness that we can't seem to control. And many of us feel like Elijah 
under the broom tree. We're ready to raise our hands and say, okay, God, enough. When will this end? But my friends, the next part of the story is the key. Because God didn't change Elijah's situation. There was no magic wand or quick fix given, but an angel came and touched Elijah and said, get up and eat. Get up and eat, for the, or the journey will be too much for you. My friends, this week, our new spiritual practice is practicing taking care of our bodies. And that couldn't have come at a better time. It's about eating healthy food and drinking enough water. It's about exercising our bodies, getting enough rest, and making sure that we wash our hands. Friends, we have quite a journey ahead of us, and there's no magic wand or quick fix. Of course, God walks the journey with us, for God is always with us up on the mountaintops, down in the valleys, and everywhere in between. But if we're going to have the strength to make it through this, we need to take care of ourselves. Friends, remember that each and every one of us is part of the body of Christ. So if you don't take care of yourself, the whole body suffers. And folks, the world needs the body of Christ today. It needs a message of hope, actions of compassion, a grace that gives without thinking what it's going to get in return, and a sense of unconditional love that works to bring wholeness and healing to our broken world. So. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as you step out into this next week of uncertainty and ever-changing norms, take care of yourself and those around you. Eat healthy food and drink enough water. Exercise your body, get enough rest, and make sure that you wash your hands. Because if you don't, the journey will be too long for you. And we need you because you are an important part of the body of Christ. My friends, may it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, I'm going to ask you to join me again in the spirit of prayer. Loving God, hold us in the palm of your hands even if just for a moment. Comfort us and reassure us that it's going to be okay. Lord, it's been a very long week, and we know that the journey has just begun. Remind us to take care of ourselves as we help to care for those around us. Today we pray for doctors and nurses and first responders around the world. We pray for our children and our parents and our grandparents. We pray for those who need to work and are separated from their families. And we pray for families who are trying to get used to being together all the time. Oh God, listen now as your children lift both silently and aloud the names of those on our prayer list and the names of those who weigh heavy on our hearts today. Oh God, we know that you never meant for the church to be a building, but on the contrary, to be the community of believers that follow you. In the days and weeks ahead, help us to make good choices, that we might all have strength for the journey. All this we ask in Jesus' name, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation,
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining us in worship today. Whether you regularly attend worship in Old Town or you regularly worship somewhere else, please remember to financially support your church if you can. Just as families need to pay their bills, the church does as well. If you're looking to donate to the church, to, to the Old Town Church, you can log on to our website, oldtownucc.org, and click the giving page, or you can send a check directly to the to the church through the mail to the First Congregational Church, 675 Old Post Road, North Attleboro, Massachusetts, 02760. Friends, I'd also like to ask that you please check in on one another. Just a quick phone call to make sure that everybody's doing okay. And if you become sick or you have needs in which the church can help, please let us know. Okay, my friends, today's service has come to an end, but please remember that the God we worship here today is the same God who goes out into the world with each and every one of you in the week ahead. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each and every one of you, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>